and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast, episode 126. Game Gaming in the year 2021, the good, the bad and the ugly, with me, George, and is this week joined by Tom. Foghorn of anger to my whisper of calm. <laughs> Tom, how goes it? This week's episode fell out of the air. Somehow, somewhere, some reason you got a text about a friend and that led to you sending me a text saying, stand back, this is what the show's going to be about. I think we originally had scheduled uh, Retro Reborn, which is um, a show we're going to be putting together about uh, retro titles that have had a new lease of life, uh, mm. such as Streets of Rage 4 and Alex Kidd and various other things that have been remade. We're, we're just waiting for the right time to do that and just get some better ideas in there. We weren't happy with the, the final script. So uh, that will be coming. It might be next year now. But yeah, I was having a thing. It's been a quite a hectic last end to the year really with video games and I think there's quite a few things to chew the fat around we'll simmer down because yeah. knowing you that's probably 75% I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm quite level headed today that's I'm, 75% I'm of, of your script you've just blown yeah gone boom that's four of the five post-its yeah so we'll regurgitate that in 10 minutes time until then obviously we've got some news coming up in there some Spider-Man news it's not what you think but it's not what you think but it is what you think okay after that the feature the Gaming in the year 2021, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yep. Then, Stingray. Then, I ask you what you're hoping to play. But before that, anyone who's listened to the show more than once, maybe twice, will know the show cannot begin until I ask you what you've been playing. This week, Ken and Bridge of Spirits. Now, we talked about this last week, didn't we? Mm. We were both a little standoffish. I quite enjoyed it. You felt the story was lacking, and I kind of agreed. But let me tell you, after spending a lot more time with it, I'm thoroughly enjoying that game. I really like the, the style. I think we need to probably forgive it a little bit because we look at the, the graphics on show. We need to remember it's only a little studio made it. It's, I haven't got a problem with the, the gameplay. I've yeah. got a problem with the characterization. It's the same problem I had with Horizon Zero Dawn. You're I love not, the game. Not so keen I do not vibe. Canon. I didn't vibe with the character. Yeah, the story's grown on me a bit. I would still say, if I weighed them all up into their compartments, the the story is probably the weakest part. I think audio, the soundtrack is stunning. T- audio, the surround nice. sound composition of Kenner Bridge of Spirits specifically, yeah, is amazing. Now, we talked about um, the gameplay and the fact that this had been mentioned in reviews before, but we both agreed that the weapon, the staff, when you were attacking enemies, didn't feel to have much, like, clout about it. I've upgraded it. Yes. Now, I don't know whether it's me, but I turned up the sound on my headphones a a, a good amount just to really pump out the volume. And I tell you what, it made the combat feel ten times better. I was just slugging away, and and it just felt like punchy and mm. real like it was connected. But I find again, I don't have an issue with the gameplay. I think it's 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 fun. I don't think it's too challenging. Some of the sort of I think engage- some of the bosses. I've I think found. some of the enemy engagements can yeah. be quite challenging. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't have the heal option, which sounds like an absolute Zelda ripoff, like, is that yeah. where? <laughs> where she chucks the rot out to the plant and then she yeah, heals. and it does you the one-time deal. Yeah. The, some of the bigger bosses, they have like two heal points, don't they? So they you do. get two chances. And you need those. And yeah, I think I'd agree. I think some of the bosses are challenging. One I'm of the last time we spoke, I was in an area that I, I was a bit annoyed about. Yeah. And uh, like I struggle with that to be honest with you this is one of my problems when i pick up a game you, and put it down are you in the second area now i don't i'm up to i haven't faced the wolf yet but i've gone up to oh um the voyeur's tower the guy who watches everybody rufus yeah a uh, route but i haven't got a bow yet or anything like that oh mate you're still like really early game it just i probably like the other day i was Playing it, I was like, do I play anymore? I was like, no. Nah. I, I would recommend just, just really getting in the rhythm of it and just give it some good time. Because it I grows don't up. Yeah, I found I have to that. sit alone for hours now. Yeah, I was I was bitten and bobbing out of the start and I was like, oh man, am I enjoying this? And I was asking too many questions and I just let myself play it and get sucked into the world and 
got a bit like a, almost the collector fever of like, I want to upgrade my character. I want to get all these abilities unlocked. Mm. So I'm more powerful. And it, it drives you a bit more when the m- m- biggest gripe Adding is the rock all- hammer made a difference for me. Yeah. The, the abilities, when you get the bow, it opens up lots of other combat options. I would argue like now the, the stage I'm at, I'm at the la- on the last mask. Um, so I'm pretty near final end game. I think I'm on a boss currently. I cut, I won't go into for spoilers for you, but you're almost using all those abilities and I've upgraded my shield and loads of other things. Be- I'm not going to say a lot because I don't oh, okay. want to spoil it for you. Uh, anything else, by the way, out of interest? I, I will get to that. I just wanted to say, you know, the rot, like, you know, all those orbs you collect and you mm. get loads, like thousands, mm. thousands of orbs. And that's where I found myself at. All you can buy with them is hats for the rock, like the little creatures. I know, the currency might, system is broken. It, it, it's like, what else is there Every time buy? I get to a new hat place, it's like, all the hats at the previous shop, possibly, possibly, plus one more. Yeah, because you, you find a lot of them within the world, which is okay. But the, why aren't the... Yeah. Have you got any of the spirit mails yet? I don't think so. I just don't They're care enough nice. about the rock. Yeah, they're a bizarre add-on, aren't they? It's almost like I, d- I don't really see... Like, if they were using the power of the next-gen consoles to give each rot an individual AI so it was off doing its own thing, you know, or, yeah. or doing I mean, something it's... different. But when I see them appear on top of a baron, they're like, hey, I'm not like, oh, my little friends, I'm just like, are they mine or is that some other rot that I'm meant to collect? Or uh, yeah. are they my rot or not my rot? Like, what? I think they could have been better implemented and they just... Like you say, they just they're appear meant to and... be like probably one of the biggest draws. They're barely on the box. You barely see them when you're playing. The I game. think I think you could play it without them. Quite I easily. don't like what what have I, I used I them for? I don't I don't use them. Up stones. I don't use them that much in combat, other than the rot infused hammer and the rot infused arrow and all that sort of mal- malarkey. I find that when you're f- f- facing an enemy and you get the option to turn turn the rot drop on or whatever it's called, where it turns into a liquid, its previous form. Oh yeah, its original form. I find has yours can... got the head. Mm. The first one I did didn't have it, and now it has like this pretty cool like. Maybe because you've leveled him up, I'm not sure. Mm. But I just find that he's hard to steer because as soon as you oh, get yeah. that, yeah, yeah. she looks down 45 degrees at the floor, and in some yeah. sections I had to walk it round the corner. Yeah. But the rot's ever coming down. It's, to be fair, it's it's only really used in the basic puzzles. I never used felt I needed and, to use and it trying combat. to control the rot in that tier form or in its yeah. original form in battle is but it's really difficult. And but, then there was a time where I actually sent my, you can send your rot into an enemy and it attacks yeah, him. Yeah, and yeah. I thought, oh great, they're distracted. So I'll run up to him and give him double damage. Yeah. As soon as I got within one pixel, slap me in the face. <laughs> yeah. Quarter of an energy bar down. Um, How? I know. Frustrating. That, that combat mechanic reminds me very much of Wonderful 101 where you have to like guide the shape of the sword or the gun. And it, I don't mind that a, as much. It feels that felt, that feels a better implementation than what we're getting The now. rot to me should have maybe been implemented a bit like Bayonetta where she harnesses these creatures and she can turn them into all these weird, massive, like threatening. I, I wonder um, if the sort of the USP of the game could have been that the rot is AI. Yeah, you don't control don't it. It just does its thing, and that's. I feel crazy. like it was probably added in more for the puzzle element than the combat. But yeah, I I think like later on, there's some really great enemy design, and and you're like, this is such a cool world. A bit like Horizon, I love the world and the setting. That's but what the I'm character saying. is a little bit bland, I suppose. I and, think my problem with story. Aloy was that she was bland, and then whenever there was an opportunity to show emotion, she was just Mardi. And for the non-Lincolnshire types, that's grumpy. Yeah, um, but I couldn't it, it, get. I couldn't. I found nothing I could bond with her about. You know, Lara he wears a heart on the sleeve, happy, look, go lucky, whatever. Aloy is just constantly moaning. It's like I'm trying to enjoy this adventure, Aloy. The world yeah. looks great. I'm killing robot dinosaurs. I think that's probably of the time we're in now, rather like. 90s Lara's like kick ass, like you say, wear your heart on your sleeve. And you look at action heroes in, in movies, they're very similar, of like they're all a bit edgy and like got problems and blah blah blah. And um, you, you kind of just want them just to get on with it and be a bit more, yeah. Like there was 
If someone said to me, oh, because she's a tribal person, she struggles to um, express herself or something like that, well, that was insinuating the game. I could get behind the delivery, the actress's delivery of why it was done in that way. Like I've said before in Assassin's Creed 3, people moan that the voice actor was wooden, mm. even though when he researched the role, he found that real Sikoi Indians or whatever it was didn't speak in the way that we did. So he wanted no, to put no, that exactly, into comedy yeah. to drag out a yeah. good performance. Yeah. If that's the case and someone sends that in to me, awesome. Anything else that you've been playing? Uh, returned uh, Battlefield. Um, we'll go, did we'll you go send Mumsy in to do that full, no, full no, wheel no, or you dealt with that yourself? No. Um, I I will. Did you go dressed as Mumsy? No. Okay. We'll, we'll go into that anyway, into the feature. Not yeah. massively. I think we've had enough rant about it. But in terms of general um, state of the industry with with those bigger companies, I think there's a lot to talk about there. But yeah, that that's about it for me. I, I was I've been on and on about getting um, getting another title with what money um, and just get on the PS store for for Battlefield. Um, there's a few indies that have tickled my fancy. You know that Chorus we looked at, we we took, did in the new releases last week. That looks fantastic. A lot really of good. Like, do you um, know, a lot of the new releases have actually been curated by a host of a podcast to make sure that he tries to put the ones in that are most interesting yes. to the gaming audience. Have you looked at it? I do. I look at all of them when I put them in. Yeah, it looks decent. The space combat's meant to be real good. Oh, Let yeah. down a bit by um, apparently. <laughs> They've tried to go all epic with a story and because of heavily influenced apparently by sort of Red Dead and Last of Us and all those big sort of story-driven games. And apparently the, the space combat is excellent uh, and the ideas and the visuals are all fantastic, but it's let down by the narrative I read. I just That's in multiple reviews. My, my, but... my thoughts on Chorus is, is it's not my kind of space sim. Oh, okay. I want to be moving cargo or want to be... Oh, you know, okay. I want to be you, Mr. I, Mundane, almost space it's a tractor bit, simulator. Uh, chorus, for people who don't know, is probably more in the vein of like Star Fox or not yeah. in cartoony way, but it's just dogfighting. Like, yeah, I, uh, I mean, Jedi me, Starfighter. That's not, yeah, it's yeah. not really. It's okay, but it's not something I would yeah. flop to. And the other one that I looked, was quite interested in was uh, Solar Ash um, from the team who made Hyperlight Drifter, if anybody's played that. Uh, yeah, looks quite interesting. I've so. been also playing 2016's Ratchet and Clank. I've oh, managed okay. to get my... Is that the one that's available to PS5 owners if you have a PS Plus subscription? I yeah, think. I think it might yeah. be actually. So I've got access to my PS4, my my PlayStation account on a PS4 remotely now. Yeah. So my option of games has gone up a little bit than the, just the Vita. So I've downloaded my so my cloud saves and all of my cloud games exist there and I can just yeah. pull down virtual my, my digital versions and okay. to be honest my digital library PSN is massive it's like three or three, four hundred games and I never realised so I'm like happy days I know it's um, not in the I, I don't know where this is in the news but this I don't know where this is this excited you but two bits of Sony rumour this week we don't do rumours and we don't do leaks here on the unofficial controller podcast Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you like video games, podcasts, and reminiscing? I'm actor, video game writer, and total sweetie pie, Connor Savage McCabe, and on each episode of Call Me By Your Game, I sit down with a guest for an intimate look at a special game from their past. Did you and your dad beat Spyro the Dragon over the holidays? Or was Halo 4 the one thing that united your roommates during your senior year of college? Stories like these are what Call Me By Your Game is about. From video game content creator Janet Garcia to Hades voice actor Courtney Venez, I interview wonderful comedians and game industry friends about these memories. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe someday you'll call me by your game. We're just getting uh, Jane's work experience board to bring the news up, just to double check. It's not in the news. Okay. I can guarantee you. So, Sony apparently are creating a Games Pass Challenger. Yeah. It's going to be in three tiers. I don't like the idea of the tiers. I think it's messy. I I think think it's anti-consumer. Yeah. Either go in or don't. Because there's going to be nothing nothing worse. If you go in head-to-head with the product that's now established itself as the social media leader of game streaming. Yeah. If you come up with something half-baked. Yeah. If you come up with something that's confusing... If you come up with something with where only the top tier competes with Xbox, 
you might as well shelve it now. It doesn't need to beat it, but it needs to match it in every single nuance. And have Sony got enough nouns to make sure the cloud is absolutely bulletproof so we're having a seamless experience? I would argue, no. No, yeah, I've heard this about PS Now. It, it's a, it, unless you run in a rock solid if, connection. If all the games can be downloaded, fine. If the PS One, PS Two, and PS Three games that are rumored exist on anything other than your console, knowing Sony's emulation efforts with their own PS One, mm. it's going to be a car crash. Yeah, no, exactly. I agree. Um, I did like the idea, but well, they were the if, first to industry with the cloud. Yeah. But they don't seem to have done a lot with it. No. I think if you're going to have those classic games available and PS Now and PS Plus, for me, neither the retro games or the PS Now interest me. So I want to keep my subscription at the price it is. I don't want to be paying any more for stuff I don't want. Well, that's why you want the tiers. Yeah, that's why I'd rather the tiers. I've also, on PS Plus, I've also sort of... um, doubled up and doubled up like if i ever see a deal for uh ps plus i'll buy it so i'm like i did i, did, I was i was tempted by um sifu oh as in you can double up your membership yeah you don't need to, oh, wait it for can... it to run out before you oh, add another year yeah, right okay and you that's don't need to wait for that to run out before you add another year <laughs> i never knew that that's uh that's so good so right, time yeah, now yeah. the deals come out well there's really some very good ones during black friday wasn't there mm. black friday what a great idea do it on the last month before everyone's paid don't worry about it. Shocking. Listen, if you're a proper grown you'd have one... waited all year for Black Friday, so you wouldn't have bought anything all yeah, year. Yes, so you'd have saved up. Yes. Saved up. Uh, smart thinking. Um, one more of the... Did you see the Please, no. patent for a Sony mobile controller? We talked about that last week, I think. Did we? Yeah. The more yeah. important one, we talked about Xbox Cloud Gaming bringing out something a little bit special, and they brought out their Dolby Vision solution for Cloud, for cloud Gaming, which is basically a graphical boost oh. for your charge. That's nice. Yeah. So Pretty cool. We weren't sure what that could be. Transpires it was that. Listen, it's time for the news. We've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up, Tom's brought his glasses, so today you can read. Yeah, first I'll up, take the first one. Don't worry, Avengers. Free suits is no bad thing. Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, which is still only available through the Ultimate Edition of Miles Morales, will soon be treated to a further two kiosk- costumes taken straight from the upcoming blockbuster film, Spider-Man No Way Home. There is a new red, blue and gold suit that has featured prominently in the past trailers as well as a black and gold get up perfect for some stealth action. Both of them feature in the new trailer above and will be available in game for free uh, starting 10th of December 2021. So if you want to check that trailer out, please visit Push Square where uh, where this article was posted. It's on YouTube as well. And YouTube, yeah. Um, Yeah, I I did watch it today thinking it was something new getting excited but it wasn't but it's still a very good deal and they're obviously pushing the well, well my argument the, there the, is you get i mean again it's a good the, time to advertise spider-man yeah well it's it? not on the ps4 version it's only on the remastered which is a bit of a shame um but uh, if you boot it up they'll be there on the 10th i i included this because out of nowhere for a game that's probably well a year old in its remastered form and goodness knows when it came out originally 2017 or whatever it was 2018 yeah. probably um, they didn't need to do anything with it. They're giving free suits. In Avengers, you get one free suit or you've got to get your wallet out. Yeah. And it's, what's going on here? Not great, is it? Not really. And I was all hyped for Spider-Man mm. coming to Avengers. And then when I saw the implementation, I think I would rather have got a fresh wolf's white porcelain plate and arranged dog food on it in the way that high dining is done. Yeah. And at that. Well, we can talk a little bit more about that in the feature. Um, uh, insert red stroke blue pill headline oh, here. Yeah. Okay. You might have heard some rumblings about a new Matrix experience coming to PlayStation in recent days. And now we know it's definitely coming to the Xbox series of consoles as well. And you can even pre-download it. It comes with a file size of almost 30 gigabytes, as it sounds like a pretty chunky experience, as it's described as free, boundary pushing, cinematic, and real-time tech demo here's the full description matrix awakens an unreal engine 5 experience available on the microsoft store created by members of the original movie team including lana wachowski along with epic games and partners the matrix awakens an unreal engine 5 experience is a wild ride into the reality bending universe of matrix this features performance by keanu reeves and carrie Ann moss want to see what's possible when you combine the power of unreal 5 with the xbox series x and s 
Step into the world of the most iconic action franchise ever made. Pre-download The Matrix Awakens and Unreal 5 experience. Now, the only other thing we know about so far is it will officially be revealed at the Games Awards 2021. Barely the Ponzi's, but you know, they've got to start somewhere on Thursday evening. So that's seemingly when the experience will unlock on the Xbox series of consoles. Thoughts on that, Tom? I mean, are we going to see a real game from this um, at the Game Awards or is this just sort of... I don't know if you checked into the news or checked out of the news, but it's it's referred to as an experience. Ah, so we're not getting the experience and then getting um, potential real full game. God only knows. I mean, Unreal Engine 5 is still very limited in what it's used in. We've not seen a great deal of it. No, we saw all the hype and, and flavour of yeah. that woman running around. I think it's still three or four years away before it's we get our first, like, you know when we played, like, Gears of War, as we were saying last week, or in the Xbox episode where we're like, wow, this feels like Unreal Engine, like, yeah. running at its peak, and yeah. or, or the graphics of that era really coming into their own, and... Yeah, I think we're we're a way off seeing that yet. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think that'd be quite nice for Matrix fans. Um, I'm really looking forward to the Game Awards. I, I just I do every year, and then they are very overhyped, it. and then I end up we'll even do a, a show about it. It'd be a flop, probably. So, yeah. Listen, every week I ask people if we've missed anything, if they've got an opinion take on the news. I want to be corrected if we ever make a boo boo. Someone messaged in, single tuner. Right, he said that shop behind Costa is called Press to Play. Press to Play. So if you're ever in Sleaford, yeah, find Costa. It's the biggest, as I said last time, waypoint in the town. Okay, everything else is shut. It's the shining beacon. That's where you need to go. Press to Play. Are you happy? Yeah. Um, Sounds good. If anyone else, I did notice also that um, unofficial controller is branching out overseas. Tell me more. That was that was the fans felt like you you needed a boost, so they prepared, out. They, I, they I was, prepared it on Photoshop. I'd been low blow Ric Flair and laid out se- by Battlefield, and, and then sent it to me to try and hype you up for next year's Ponzi's. Oh right, they okay. want to see a more hyped show. No, well, I know you've said I, this to Mumsy and said we've made it, and that's fine. Yeah, I thought you might have zoomed in and gone. Oh, it's just a round sticker on paint. Yeah, it. It, it did sort of look very clean compared to the rest of the picture, but that's a good effort. And I, I um, the challenge has been laid down. The Ponzi's need to be a bigger event next year. So I need it was only start. a test in the water just to see whether we got any feedback for it. And uh, the fans we delivered. did. We got some great comments. What and, do you mean? Of course we did. Uh, and, and everyone voted for. Well, I don't know why you, you keep for... asking them to prove it to you. They love us. Insecure. I know. That's what performers are. Yeah. Well. Last week, obviously this week, we got corrected. So do you have an opinion or take on the news we missed? If so, Tom, tell me how the collective masses would get in contact with us and let us know that we're flaming galahs of the Australian variety and that Mrs. Mangle could embarrass us on a nez. <laughs> well, you can always reach us on questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com, which is our email address, or you can direct messages on Instagram or Twitter. And you can also reach us on our Discord, which was uh, had a little award of its own. Um, which is great. Mm-hmm. I think we can do some more with that next time. Uh, it's a whole year to wait, so a bit of, bit of a... Wow. So this week, Tom, I think I've brought up my script of things I need to do to prepare myself for him. And uh, he's basically gaming in 2021, the good, the bad and the ugly. Uh, Tom messaged me last over the weekend, said that he was emotional he had had a message from a friend who said well the game might get fixed in a patch and that was okay because that's how gaming is and all i got was a message saying not good enough tell everyone on the show to sit down and buckle in because this is going to get messy he wanted a 20 minute rant <laughs> un- uninterrupted to put things right um now to prepare for this I had to invite, 24 hours before today, I had to invite Reverend Green in to bless the area and throw around holy water. You then told me that you wanted to edge your bets, so you asked me to contact all the other religious religious denominations in the village in case you were praying to the wrong god. Fair play. Absolutely. I've been burning insects in the area to prepare the creative space. You're all going to prepare, you've prepared a solo monologue to microphone. Now, 
I've also had your directions, and Darren, the dastardly agent, has been in touch, and he wants me to make sure that I throw rose petals in your general direction, but not at him, as someone nearly, nearly <laughs> actually had his eye out at Woking Village fate. <laughs> Tom, Tom, it's a true story. Tom's true story. had a lectern brought in because he wants to stand to deliver, like all good thespians. I need to work in a section where I acknowledge that you've trodden the boards, but... To save confusion, I am then to make people understand that treading the boards is the actor's inside name for performing, not you just actually walking on actual floorboards. <laughs> you wondered whether I should do one of my history bits to camera and weave that in, but then we decided maybe that we would let you do that to make you seem as intelligent as your audience perceives you to be. <laughs> I'm going to support by clapping. And I'm also meant to sort of say your last word of your sentence to make it appear as if you've almost telepathically communicated with me in the audience. So I'm kind of finishing your sentences because we're on the same thing. I then, just to clear things up, I need to fake faint at your most outrageous thing that you say in your monologue. Then I return to consciousness. All f- you know, like when you see the, the, the Jesus people. Yeah, yeah. yeah where that's like- what I would be. Then when I come round, I confirm you're either Jesus... Well, that could be a bit edgy with the Christians near Christmas. So I'll maybe call you some sort of space Jesus. Okay. Then this is where things got a bit CGI. You're meant to ascend to the heavens, but we're thinking that we don't have enough budget for that. So maybe if I dress all in black and we turn the lights out and you got on my shoulders and Stingray blew his vape at your feet <laughs> and I stood up, could that look really spiritual? I think it would rival anything that we have done for The Undertaker. Quite and, easily. And when we finish, if the audience don't cheer or throw roses, me and Stingray must do it. Of course. Well, you're not going to let me down, are you? We would never. Okay. I would never. With that all said and done, is there anything else you want me to do for the creative space? I think it looks great. I like the little smoke machine you've got churning in. That's Give Stingray a in a box. Of, is it? Yeah. Just... just Blowing it through a box from another room. He's adopted it's- another small person. Apparently Wayne was never his child. He's just small and useful for thieving. Oh. But Wayne Wayne Ray he is the Fagin of Wayne Ray was fifty two. Fifty two. Yeah, he was wow. he was in Wicket. Was he? Yeah. He he was in the suit. Yeah, he was in Wocket. He it was in the Wocket. <laughs> <laughs> Walk it, Davis. Just, just do your rant. I'll be, I'll be. I'll, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this show. You're fine. You can come and sit down. I'm having a nervous it's breakdown. You're fine. Okay. You, you fluff one line. <laughs> That's below average for this show. I don't think We're there good. was a number below zero. Well, now the stage is set. Been excellently set by you and Stingray. I was Great never going to read that out, but I thought I'll just have it in the background. No, I, I love it. I think, um, <laughs> and yeah. I thought as he's talking to Mike, he might flick up and read that, and then start laughing. That was the only reason it existed. But I thought, no, I'll read it out. I like the incense; gives it a Christmassy feel. What about the other or a religious? Obviously, feel? Um, hmm. Ronald the Rabbi. Yep. Reverend Green. Yep. Nick the Muslim. Oh my god. <laughs> Who else have we got? Don't ever... I th- Just do your piece. I think we should go. I think that's cancellation, unless I edit it out. And, and do you know what, at this stage, episode 126, I can't be bothered. We've got to cover all faiths. <sighs> I don't know the holy man of any other religions. That's why I stopped it when I did. Barry the Buddha? Buddhist? That's not the... Okay, what's wrong with gaming in 2021? Start with the good. The good. Mm. Been a great year. We've we've been given plenty of content consider, considering it's COVID. I think we've been very fortunate to get some of the titles we've got. We covered some of those in uh, Game of the Year 2021 last week. <laughs> Obviously, there's never been as much choice as we've got. Obviously, we've got indies, we've got AAA games. Actually, uh, on got, that note, we've got two. I was brand on new... Steam earlier. You know, I often warble on about Games Pass. Not, yeah, needs to be more curated. I still believe that PSN is such a garbage show. <laughs> <laughs> they need to curate something on there to push some of the good of game, 
some of the yeah. better games to the top because mm-hmm. I feel they just get at, unless you're on the splash page, you're done. Yeah, you'll and get that, the new releases. And you're that on there a week, and that's it. As well, like yeah. absolutely no space for them. Games Pass. I just want to see some creation. You know, welcome to the Xbox brand. Here's some of our biggest titles across the whole of the generation of systems. To be honest, they're small fry. Yeah. I thought I'd run the same analysis on Steam. Hmm. My God. The bar is set real low on there. Oh, okay. It's terrible. I thought it'd be high. No. They see every Master day, and everything. Every day, an indie game of barely any note crawls onto Steam. <laughs> and further solidifies absolute dung heap you have to go through before you find a good experience, that needs a proper workout. Okay. It's all right saying I've got the most content, but if it's like looking for a needle in a haystack, lose patience real quick. Yes, yeah. being done. Digital storefronts, car crash. I think there's been a lot of headway made in how we can interact online with each other, with everybody being locked up for a long time, too long. We've obviously had Animal Crossing was the year before, but that's going from strength to strength and still mm. one of the top-selling games on Nintendo Switch. Uh, digital spaces to to meet and play with friends is, is massive. Mm-hmm. Um, usually they're pretty well, uh, the servers are pretty strong. But I don't want to go too much about the good because it's, it's still been a relatively quiet year when you compare it to others, and that is probably heavily influenced by covid and then we've got these other issues in the industry. If with, you don't want to talk with... about the good, let's put to bed the reason you came here. The bad and the ugly. What well, one do you want to start with? <laughs> the good looking fellow that's badly behaved or the bad looking fellow that actually doesn't do too much wrong? They're all as bad, really. <laughs> I'm talking about... I was just thinking, Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony... They all do little things wrong. Like, they might churn out too many remasters. Milk something. Milk a franchise for too long. But overall, the the, the products they put out, I think, are really well-polished, high-quality games. Mm. And they... I know they all say the consumer's our friend and we, we love all our fans and... You do want to believe it, but you've got to remember they are a business and there's a lot of people behind the scenes who just want to make the money. Absolutely. But as those three companies well, they have go... they to, to be sat. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And we're the only person that they can screw for that cash. Exactly. As, as those three companies go, I think we're really lucky. We, we get some great first-party games from all three. Agreed. They've, they've built some brilliant consoles, doing some great things. It still feels a little bit behind with the two new gen consoles. They're not quite where we were hoping they were going to be. Nothing's wowed us that much yet, but it's early days. It's only a year. I think the problem with this generation is that we had the halfway houses, we had the One Xs, and we had the Pros. Now, if we'd been on basic equipment, it should have just been. If we'd been on base equipment, we wouldn't have known any different. Yeah. When. PS5 and the series consoles came out, we would have been blown away. Mm-hmm. It was very easy for a, a casual to moderate player to be able to trade or just spend the money getting an update, a version 1.5 console, whatever you call it, Series 1X or whether you call it Pro. I love that idea. I just think some of the titles we've had towards the end of those consoles last we would have struggled with. I think we'd have seen more cyberpunk scenarios where the base consoles would have just chugged and struggled. You'd have a PC version that was great. Yeah, but at that point, it's time to upgrade. Yeah, true. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, 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 agreed. Uh, Maybe they could have brought And the the Pro and the One X basically covered that issue with filler. Because if you were a more engaged gamer like you or I, you already had a Pro. If you were a a One X. Yeah. So you were, I I mean, all I heard during cyberpunk was, I'm having a great time. Yeah. And I looked around the people with the pros or the PS5s or the series X's. They were having a great time. Yeah. But the day one, one X was probably smoking and the PS4 pro probably on runway five cleared for takeoff. Yeah. Like I say, I think next year is going to be good. 
it, it's hopefully next year will be the last year of the cross platforms, and then we start it towards the end of next be. year. We start I think a, without COVID, they may be a bit more aggressive, but I'm actually not sure. the The problem for the problem for Sony really is that the PS4 was an absolutely stinking success. Yeah, and that means they have an install unlike one they've seen since the PlayStation Two days, and they're still this Christmas they'll still be selling PS4s. Yeah, absolutely. Gangbusters. Yeah, yeah. Right? People still be buying. So that uh, console's Pro. numbers are going to keep going up until yeah. at least the end of next year. Well, if you're if you're not that into game or into gaming enough that, and you're not wanting to spend loads of money, you're just going to go. Well, next year I can play Gran Turismo Seven, Horizon Forbidden West, and God of War Ragnarok on my on this PS4 Pro, just the same as PS5, but probably slightly less bells and whistles. So there's not a lot of point upgrading for some people. Um, the only problem with that is they delisted the Pro. I don't know whether Xbox have adopted the same strategy, but I don't think you can get Pro anymore. It's oh, really? Space PS4 Slim, yep. PS5 Digital. Oh, right. So I think I would have kept the Pro, but maybe for the same reasons we're talking about now, it made sense to ditch the Pro. So you have, it's like McDonald's. The medium price exists for only one reason, to make yeah. you get the large. The PS4 it, it, it exists mainly so you get the, the digital. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, moving on from moving on from that is stock issues. We have people saying they still can't get hold of the next-gen consoles. I think, well, I went into Smith's at the weekend no Xbox Series X's or S's or PS5's. I think that's just a, a problem we're going to have for a bit longer because there's obviously this microchip shortage worldwide. I could um, go on Amazon and buy a Series S now. Yeah? They're okay, going to be, yeah, yeah. I think they're going to be the big winners. I think we said this last week. Yeah. They are going to clear up this Christmas with that Series S. Yeah. Um, the oh, right definitely, price, definitely. it's available. And better than that, this is the real clever part. If you're Xbox, you are absolutely tying someone in in the hardest possible way to your brand. Yeah. Because it's got no disc tray. So yeah. you're either Games Pass or you're buying digital games. And once mm. you've gone three or 400 quid deep yeah. on a digital library, you will never leave that ecosystem again without some serious consideration about Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you're you're more liable to get a second console for the first time than than get rid of it altogether. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, so stock issues. Hopefully they improve next year. Um, I can almost see like a sort think- of soft relaunch for the PS5. I believe you can get the PS5. I've seen the PS5 digitals. Yeah. Available and available secondhand prevalently. Okay. Do you think if PS Now was more of a thing and the internet was a little bit more reliable in rural areas, oh, yeah, yeah. they'd be doing... Yeah. I wonder if the time for the rise of the digital PS5 is around the corner if they can nail this Games Pass competitor yeah. or whatever we're calling it. The Now with tears, the PS Plus combined. I mean, it's a way off from what they were saying. It's probably going to be March, April time next year where they're talking about no releasing that. No need to rush. No, no. Right there is now, better, better to get their it right. model is working for them. I've always said, probably if you're Nintendo or Sony, it's probably best to ignore Games Pass because for everybody else, it's probably the Wii. And by the time they've done something similar, Xbox, you've got the the tech lead, the market lead on that, will have moved another step forward and you'll rock up with the equivalent of a PlayStation move. That's not a good look. No. <laughs> Worse true. still, you rock up with a version of the original Connect. Yeah. That's a terrible look. Mm-hmm. So it's worth the time. Was that the bad or the ugly? boy? A bit of both. I think we need to move on to the, the real bad of the industry this year. Well, it's been going on quite a few years now. I, I was recently watching a a clip of um, the gaming year two thousand and one. Mm. That's twenty years ago. Yeah, the titles that launched that year were were phenomenal. Um, it's a good year in gaming. 
if you want to go check out that, go have a look because it's just a, an abundance of tiles that came out. There. Hardware as well, um, Xbox One, GameCube, um, I think with GBA. Xbox Original. Xbox Original, yeah. I feel like that might be, I could maybe argue like PS4, Xbox One era. I feel like they might be looked back on as the golden era of video games because other than the big three releasing their first party titles, we are being served up some of the most rushed, badly made, microtransaction filled games we've seen ever. And it ain't going to stop because I sent you a message of a friend of mine who had messaged me when this I told him I was return, to returning um, Battlefield. His words were, it's to be expected. Games are just half finished now. He seems happy that he's got Battlefield and it's not very well made. It's not finished. You can clearly see whatever's been going on it's just been rushed. They've not listened to their own hardcore community. They've gone out and looked at Call of Duty, Vanguard and Fortnite, various other things. Go. I'm not attacking the developers at all. I don't know how hard it is. Just to... my... let me finish, sorry. I did, like Video game developers do have a very hard job. We spoke to Mike Rouse. It's not an easy job. I'm not attacking them. Don't want to get off on the wrong foot. It's the companies that are running or telling these developers what to do, rushing them to get a product out in time for Christmas. We see it time and time again. Don't worry, guys, it's going to be fixed within the next few months. Months. I don't go to a car showroom, buy a car, and then expect them to go, yeah, it should be running within one or two months properly. Like, I want it to work when I drive it off the forecourt. Or... It's just ridiculous I've notion. I've got some bad news for you. You're in that industry, so don't spoil my... Analogy. That, that industry now is working towards a place where all vehicles are connected and can have over the air vehicle software updates performed. Oh, really? Labor okay. Or, you know, this exists on most vehicles now. True. If okay. you've even got an issue, they yeah. can actually tweak your. They don't look at every vehicle individually, how it's driven or anything like that, but they are looking for. This is a really boring story, but I think it's quite interesting. It's got a technological li- okay. link to it, and I think people need to breathe them. The uh, so they don't look at every individual vehicle and say, "Oh, look at Tom from Lincolnshire is driving like a complete horse." They okay. don't do anything like that, but they're looking for once every vehicle's connected, they can start to see ebbs and flows in the data. Okay. So if they notice that certain people are having misfiring issues or wet sensor issues yeah. or whatever, they can investigate that and fix it over the air with an update. Now, sometimes you will need to put your vehicle into a stage where it can accept it. Sometimes it can just be done over the air. Now, they see in the industry of the motor industry, they see that as being a great thing. But as gamers, we see it as unfinished product. Absolutely, yeah. Um, How dare they put an update on this? They're trying to make it better. They are trying to make it better. What I'm saying is the games are releasing. Don't get me wrong. If if it's got a day one patch, I kind of expect that because they're just ironing out anything from the, like the, the preview build code that all the uh, magazines and industry um, insiders get. The magazine. The, the magazine. The, <laughs> more like the Singular. website. Yeah, the magazine. Uh, very good. Um, I just, I'm a little bit sick of being pushed these very unpolished, just poor games. I, in, this, in this position, I see myself as devil's advocate. Okay. Do you think any creative person involved in the industry thinks I'm going to make sure I serve up the biggest dog poo on this shiny silver. No, not all. Okay. So where do we think it's going wrong? Because of being influenced by people probably in, in the board meetings when they're like, what do we need to do? Our kids and people, they just love skins. Let's let's, let's just, so I can devil's advocate. Let's not demonize these people. I shouldn't think if I walked you into the, to the, head office of THQ and sat you down in the boardroom. Yeah. People would talk in that room and you wouldn't be able to single out one of the, there, there isn't someone we can oh, say. Oh no, there isn't. You is can't singularly blame. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you, we can't do that. It's an industry. So problem, people are making these decisions because they're being forced by money, profit, shareholders, time. Yeah, absolutely. Don't forget the guy who's saying, I want this game out for Christmas regardless. Cause I want to see some of my coin back. 
yeah. probably has put coin in, or he's probably had to gather investors on his name and his company's name to put money, money into this project. I mean, I don't know whether it then does fall to the developers and they, they get more of a backbone. They, they probably haven't got – it's their jobs on the line, so they probably can't, but they need to just turn around and go, no, this is not finished. We're not going to – we'll just stop work. But they can't because this is this then becomes like a strike problem and we have all sorts of issues and they can't – they they might be made redundant right imagine, before Christmas. Imagine it's, a time before games were as complicated as they are now. Do you know how we solved this There problem? were games that came out on cartridge that were broken with no Yeah, way yeah, we, we, uh, we had No Mercy where um, it would glitch Dude, and you couldn't finish the campaign. There's like – I have got several metrop- versions of Metropolis Street Racer. There yeah. actually were two versions published. Yes, yeah, the actual latter mercy. one, the fixed one, very hard to find. The first one is broken, yeah. and most people have got the broken one in their collection. Uh, Everyone feverishly now running to Google in their collection. <laughs> no, don't tell me I've got bro- Should have finished it. Should have finished it. Then you know. It's uh, true. Um, I think you know what the biggest problem is, and I know how we should solve it. Because consumers we we need to stop to stop pre-ordering stop buying this stuff that many people actually involved in the industry have actually gone on record to say the pre-ordering and the pre-supporting of these products is what's causing some of the issue problem is i'll, I'll fully admit i got bought into the hyper battlefield 2042 you I looked gave the train- them money to class as profit before you even got the game to decide for yourself Without even thinking about it. Yeah. Um, I don't usually pre-order. To be fair, this was a was a birthday gift, so fair, it, was, it was ordered. I haven't really... In my time, I don't think I've been involved in any pre-orders that I've been hyped about. Back in the day, me and you would trot down for midnight for a big release, be Asda or Game or whatever we would yeah. do. I, I don't ever remember feeling massively disappointed by a pre-order, though. Only in the last two or three years has a pre-order yeah, that's felt what I'm a saying. little bit like it a is, sick burn. Yeah, it just feels like... Every year, and the yearly updated games, FIFA, Call of Duty, Battlefield isn't always yearly updated. Um, what else are we talking? NBA, uh, WWE, they've all just been just... I, I mean, take some pride in, in what you're doing and just... Well, I see, we've talked, MLB is a prime example of a yearly grindy update. That's actually one that I've never been disappointed by. It's the attention to detail and the craftsmanship make that not feel like a yearly, like, oh, I've got it's, 21, do I need 22, do I need 23? Yeah, it, it obviously updated rosters of teams and various new features they can implement. I mean, we've discussed before I've with the w- to, I've listened to, to developers of yearly updates, and they basically say, you might think, you might think that we've got time to do everything that you talk about. So when we bring out the new FIFA and everyone goes, oh, that's crap, we have to pick one, this is this is on record, we have to pick one new feature, feature that yeah. you want us to improve or yeah. implement, and that is all we've got time for. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We, we've, we've known that for a and while. And every but... year you moan. And every year we tell you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The consumer is the problem. If you, if you stop buying these, they will look at probably different ways to, to fleece you. <laughs> is there a way that sports games could find a happy medium? Let's say they, not the year the console launches because it's normally a crossover. As, as much as I don't like it, I actually think live service for sports games is probably the, the better way to My go. thing is, they're not going to do that. It's a bit like tax, isn't it? They're used to, at the moment, every year bringing this out and every sports nut game yeah. going and buying the new FIFA because it's got an update to, yeah. I don't know, Beckham's chin tash. Yeah. I need it. I can't play FIFA without it, even though I'm 40 foot above the ground. Unless his haircut's exactly right, I'm 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 done with this game. <laughs> they're not going to then, unless the yearly update digital is a reasonable price. And I'm thinking twenty quid. So you buy the core game physical or digital. Yeah. And then every year it's only an additional 20. Or you can go in the shops and buy the retail version of the game, which has got everything on it for fifty nine ninety nine. I think that would be wise. I, I would personally be going for the just the digital upgrade, like where it, I don't know, brings in the fixtures for that season. And they could almost do more with it as well. Like I feel like you could have a, a live season. Uh, I'm talking football here because it's the one 
of I'm, I think I'm most do. aware of. Yeah, already. on FIFA. Hmm. There's all the still... content that pushes through. You tell it which your favourite team is. There's news along the bottom. There's player longs. I think you'll find next week we'll have a whole tray of letters where people have messaged. If we don't get one, the only person who listens to the show I'm anymore talking about is Monzi. like live online league where you're playing in a league with, yeah. with friends. So am I. And that's what they're doing. I guarantee you that's already in FIFA. Okay. If it's not, then... I haven't played one in a couple of years. I don't remember there being anything. Well, you could play online with your friends. I'm but... sure there's a league. If there's not, then it's probably the worst sports game ever made. <laughs> there you go. What else do you need to put the gaming industry right on this week? Nothing much. I just think I'm real frustrated about the, the disappointment of Devil's Advocate here. If you would have bought an Xbox yeah. Series S or X instead of the PlayStation 5 and you'd gone down the Games Pass route and therefore you had 300 games constantly cycling to rifle through no cost really apart from your £10 a month so you wouldn't feel like oh, 60 bucks. would you feel like you were having a better experience do you think at this point in time in the industry would that help showcase to you some older games that you might have missed and therefore give them a go or, or I just important? wouldn't I just I, I don't I would never consume my games like that I just don't ever see me wanting to play video games like that to me that is like Netflix and when I watch Netflix I, I find it really hard to just stick to watching one thing I find it really hard to find anything watch the only thing that i like at the top of netflix is there is some curation like hey yeah, see, you know, I, I like you've seen this i like before the, i like the you, top 10 i think that's really nice yeah. it gives you some idea of like that sounds really good people are obviously interested in that i'll give that a watch there's some great content on there i love netflix things the thing is like that's, this is my argument with the storefronts there's so much good stuff on there but there's so much chelp help yeah, me find, yeah 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 help me find the great yeah. experiences and i will love you forever that's why i think it's a. I'll I'll talk about Games Pass in the way that I'd look through the PS Store. I'm looking through. I'm looking through. I'm like, that looks quite good. I'll have a little bit of a look at that. By the time I'm done, like an hour's passed, mm. and and you've got this wealth of content which we talked about at the start. The feature saying we're very spoiled. We've got loads of stuff to play, but also if it was more condensed in a way, like I I think Games Pass is great. Love it for Xbox fans. I hope it continues. But for me, if I go out and spend fifty, sixty pound on a game, I try and really think about what I'm getting, and um, then you see and, it and through, up and, and I see it through, and you kind of more and invested could, in it. You are. Absolutely. I have noticed I think, that in my mindset with the games that I've been playing. Absolutely, more more committed to like, you. You want to see your value for money. The and, Xbox and, kind of sits there, and it's like I could go play on that. Or I've just bought Kenner. But the, and I want to this, see this. Let's use I Kenner. want to get me money back. Yeah, let's yeah. use Kenner as an example because if I'd have bought Kenner on Games Pass and been playing those sort of odd hours where I was it like... It would have got done, wouldn't it? It, it, would, it would have been, oh, I'll just see what else is on there. I didn't pay for this. There might be something else. Because I've bought it, it was, I think, like £35. Not a high-end price tag, but yeah, still enough to... Yeah. Um, a well-priced game, in my opinion, of what I've played so far. But if I hadn't got through those initial hours and then really started to enjoy it, I'd have never had that experience on um, on, on Games Pass or, or or the equivalent because I'd have just shooed it off for something else. And I think that happens with a lot of TV series and films. Like I, I think but, we're quick, so quick to dismiss because we have so many other options available. To but us. the game. But let's say if, as an argument. The Xbox game, we didn't pay for that game. So if they don't like it within the first 10 minutes, they don't like it. And they don't need to force themselves to play it to see some sort of recompense in the 30 uh, Yeah, yeah, there's arguments for both sides. I, I just want to make that. sure both sides get a fair crack of the whip. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm defending um, the video game industry. I haven't got a favourite, but you are... I need to make sure the listeners can get their voice heard. I don't necessarily agree with these cam statements I'm saying, but I just want to run them through the logic gate to see what comes out. Yeah, no, absolutely, like... There's there's an idea there that yeah you you haven't got to waste time like validating it for yourself to that you've bought that and you're like, oh, if I'm money was no object and you'd played Kenner and he didn't vibe with you in the first you ten just, minutes yeah. why are you wasting time on it yeah 
Um, is it a good game if you have to battle through nearly 90% of it before you go, this is all right? No, I... And I this I was, is only all right. This will yeah. never be good. This will only ever be okay. No, I've I've had a lot of fun with it. I think after the first couple of hours, I was really enjoying it. And Is it better or worse than Days Gone? Well, that's an interesting question. The barometer by which all games are now measured. I still look back and think, did I... I loved that game. It's a nice game, isn't it? I the think... gameplay was good. The story had enough meat to it that it hooked me. The bike, first of all, slapped me. But by the end of it, it was I loved it more than Marcus yeah. Horse. You know, maybe not, but it, you had a bond with it. The game yeah. was not very kind to you for the first 20, 30 minutes, maybe three hours. But once you got to the lake, it was great. Yeah, I almost feel like that third area... Was almost a little too big, and by by the end of that game, I was like, hmm, "I wish I'd just condense it down a little bit." You I, know what? Days Gone would have been better as what linear, more linear no, version. No, 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 it no, would no, have no, been, no, no. would have been. All the enjoyment I got from it was from the free form of it all. Do you think? Yeah, for me, okay. but yeah, yeah. I, for me, I think it felt like Last of Us had been nailed on an open world. And actually, if they had actually been brave enough and let them use that license, I think it would have it would have added so much more. I suppose to see it in a bigger world, and also would have took away some of the heat that Last of Us Two struggled with. Because, well, why? Who said Last of Us is all about Ellie and Joel? Because we've just had Last of Us that was about Deacon and these guys, and that's fine. So now we have Last of Us Two which is a continuation of the first story, but it's okay for these things to happen because it's The Walking Dead. Yeah. It's not the Rick show. Yeah. I was about to say, oh, open world struggles with, struggle with narrative, but you look at Red Dead and there's some of the characters have been most invested in ever, and that is in an open world setting where you could get so distracted yeah, the for hours. Thing that, the, this is a real weird grievance, but the only thing I sort of like struggled with with Days Gone a bit was the fact that I don't really feel like they're using an engine for the cutscenes because it always faded to black. It yeah. Was a bit messy, wasn't it? Yeah. Some in game bits were great, and then there were bits that looked in game, but they weren't in game, but they were CGI, but they weren't CGI. But, you know, come on, what's happening here? It's almost like they, en- they rendered them in engine, filmed it, committed it to a video, and then bolted it into the Blu ray. Mm. It seems daft. Yeah, it does. Like, how many times have you seen guys T-posing in the background <laughs> as the camera lifts up and then the animation starts? You know, it's not difficult, surely, yeah. but they've chosen certain reasons. I think we've got a little sidetracked. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back to uh, to where we were at, how we consume so, video games. Year in gaming 2021, good, the bad, and the ugly. Are you top, middle, or bottom in your emotions for 2021? Just middle. It's been a, a good... Video, video you games see, I, I think that we've come out of this relatively unscathed. I had visions of you going full loco. No, I... Th- Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> no. <laughs> no frogs splash off the top of a cage. That's what I thought I was getting ready for. Yeah, no, no. I was we, wearing we a D-Lo need- Brown bulletproof vest, <laughs> stab vest to protect me. You know, that's a weapon! That's a weapon using that vest in that way. No, we, we, don't, we, we don't need to... Um, we don't need to... Board up the windows and doors. My God, Tom, there's a hearse parked at the bottom of the drive. His number plate just says listener's stingray. What can it mean? What can it mean? <laughs> oh, that's never coming back. What buried, can it mean? Buried. Last week, buried. the tombstone hit by the lightning. The name inscribed listener's stingray. This week, the hearse at the bottom of the drive. The license plate reads listener's stingray. My God, is he coming back? No. Hashtag listener stingray. <laughs> Is that all she wrote for the feature? That's a good feature. I think so. Well, what's you been doing this week? The Ray, the mighty Ray, the ones that brings us the new the one that brings us the new releases and all of our counterfeit goods. As usual as he was last year. My it's Haddy, been, Dash, it's been, it's my been... Haddy ha- Addy Hash joggers. Yeah, Haddy Dash. <laughs> My is Eclipse jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have one of them? No, mate. Oh, no. you must have done. No, You'd have been were, into all that. Were, no, they Spliffy. Were, they were for the gimpy, little, chavvy little ra- ravers. Oh, okay. That went to the mummy shows. Oh, okay. If you went to the proper stuff, you wore the proper gear. You didn't wear any of that. And like. what was the proper gear? 
And less shoes. Yeah, less jumper or just Adidas trainers and some jeans yeah. and just a, a non-brand big Swear. knit. Yeah. yeah. Depending on time of the year. You if you walked around in the eclipse, it's a bit like the sticks, a bit try hard, isn't it? Okay. It's a bit try hard, isn't it? His retro gamer Thomas is sat there now with his white fingerless on. I remember. <laughs> he's got his hands tucked either side, so he's got a glow stick clamp between the two. He's looking at Donna, who's halfway through the rep pressing play on the pleasure dome tape pack and he's like George says no Don George says no <laughs> I remember cousin Ian coming down from from his bedroom once and he, he looked like a, a sort of Jeff Hardy type character with like neon paint all over him and that's an era that I want in that era yeah that was uh, not he, he by looked like time, a cross between Ultimate Warrior and Jeff Hardy I was probably changing nappies when he was changing True. glow sticks uh, yeah Maybe so. Okay, I've no idea what Ray's up to. Uh, he's uh, as last year he's helping Uncle Jeff with the game awards, getting the stadium set up and podium. To be fair, he's never let Uncle Jeff down. He hasn't. He lets us down on a weekly basis, but Uncle Jeff is. I like... think Stingray, Stingray kind of shapes himself to fit the stage he's on. Yeah. So when Jeff says I need something, he's equal to Jeff. When he wanted we Hideo say... Kojima last year. He just kidnapped him. Took him to Jeff, said, there you go. Hideo will never be over that. Anyway, no. it's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot, what's nestled between some counterfeit nappers and a dodgy copy of Black Friend this week. These are new release highlights from the 6th, 7th, 12th, 2021. Listeners, these are out in digital, physical, or will be. <laughs> oh, they will be. Or well, possibly not. But it could be region dependent. First up, we've got This Is The President, PC, December 6th. This is the president. The Zomba. That's <laughs> like a zombie <laughs> version of Christmas. Zomba. That's Zomba. December got bit by uh, by October. This is the president in a political thriller. You are the newly elected leader with a shady background. It is up to you to abuse the position of the most powerful man in the world to escape justice for past crimes, even if that pitches the country into utter chaos. Goodness me! Can you believe? Can you believe? That's much better. I can read that much clearer. Now, third should be your game of the year because they basically (laughs) listened to your rant about about Battlefield (laughs) and went, we need to rustle up a game quick for Tom on his Steam Deck. Get it here now. (laughs) It's Thunderpile Tier 1. Okay, before we get there, Rune Factory 4, special on PC, PS4 and Xbox One. December 7th, journey to the vibrant world of Rune Factory. An experience and legendary fantasy farming adventure like never before. Now, Tom, Halo Infinite's my mummy mummy, but I think that you should give this one your mummy mummy. Okay, mummy if mummy. If you watch the trailer, shall we Thund- watch the Thund- trailer on air? Yeah, why not? Why Thunder not? Tier 1. Yeah. Bring it up then. Don't say it like that, because you're either going to see my breakfast or my piece. Okay. You want the trailer? Yes, but neither of the aforementioned before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keyboard's not working. Wayne, plug in the keyboard. Well done, Wayne. This is a first. This is. Is this going... like Robot Wayne? Because he's been. I don't know. What yeah. was that game called? Thunder Tier One. Thunder Tier One. I see what you mean about the Steam Store. It needs curation, does it not? It looks a bit of a mess. I mean, they're still pumping Far Cry Primal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm, not okay. into, I'm not into the latest games, but even I might find that a little egregious. Okay, show me what I've picked for my mummy mummy this week. Let's Goodness give the fans a listen because this? the it's on max volume. Salovia, slobber. Get the job done. Time is running short. Move out now and hit the ground running. Locate the enemy. Disrupt their operations. Oh, one more thing. Bring the thunder. Bring the thunder. Operation Red Sword to go. Move up. Copy that. Quick, let, let's make the song out of knife swipes. <laughs> Quick, get Caston on the phone. Can they pop down to the local filling station and see if they can get generic Thames Estuary Macho Man 1 and then generic Northern Man 2? 
I don't think that looks too bad. Tactical it's top down just shooter. the genericness of it all. Oh yeah. It's catered to the guy that thinks he's in the army because he once thought about joining the army. He's a super army soldier, he's got a collection of knives under his bed. He wears army surplus. He goes running on the weekend with an army backpack on in the hope people think he's either training for or in the army. That kind of character. Okay. He's playing that in the dark, giving it tango down. Yeah. That's what people want, though, from that. If you're going to buy that, it's like if if you were playing, you, you like to go all in on, on what game you're playing at the time, don't you? I'm playing... I uh, think you're painting me with your own brush. I, I like to think you do that as well. Certainly eases your conscience, doesn't it? Does, it does, yeah. <laughs> it does. Saying that, I put a, I, I did live the life a little bit when I played Guardians, but I challenge anyone knew not it. to. Because I it. knew that you would, but I already had all the stuff. It's not as though I went out you get, and bought I, a Tomahawk. Joke. It's would, not as though I went out okay. and bought an Indian Navajo blanket. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, do you not? It's already in episode Wind chime. Four. Did you see the skip the other day? All that ghost of Tsushima, wind chimes. That's all that. Uh, what's it's coming awesome. in now? Uh, God. Well, the Guardians for Christmas, won't it? Yeah. You know, little rocket, little yeah. brute. Yeah. No, I'm not load buying the brute. I'm going to bring it. I'm just going to bring the tree in. Load of Pompo Fonks and... <laughs> um, yeah. Let's, let's... Yeah, well, you joke. The other night, I was like... Because uh, I got Disney Plus for this month because we have it for the boy over Christmas. Oh, no. Uh, the boy over Christmas? He's a toddler. Toddler. toddler he doesn't even know toddler. what he's watching on TV. Toddler. He's a toddler. A toddler. Okay. <laughs> he has no idea what you're watching. He'll just watch whatever you shovel down his throat. We've got... you. I love the idea that you've sat around <laughs> and had a family conversation where you've gone, oh, the boy needs Disney Plus for Christmas the same way he needs the medieval blacksmith. <laughs> and I was toying with getting in the Ghostbusters playing with Burn. I was like, no, he's going to get Duplo because that's my pledge to him as a man. Uh, I did buy him some Duplo at the weekend for Christmas. So we need to just. Um, How dare you? How dare I? <laughs> <laughs> what does he need for Duplo? Did, did he get the bridges? Yes. I have got him the two race car set with the pole position like the grid. Thing, um, I think they want to hear this. I don't think. I, I don't know why. I don't think they do. We need to get back to the new. We releases. need to find out what Tom's going to get. What? Oh, Tom's... so I got Disney Plus, and then I started watching Guardians of the Galaxy One, and then I turned it off, thinking, "No, you know what you're like." This is me having a conversation with my inner head of like, "No, you will end up watching it when you play the game. Play the game, watch the film." I did watch Big Trouble in Little China on Disney Plus, though, which was nice. But it's really laggy. I feel like the Duplos, we've got all, we've got him all the good sets. What's left? There's like a little fire engine house. I thought I'd got him that. I thought he had that. No, he's got a, well, he's got one fire engine. Right. Okay. Well, they, they need to do more Duplo, really. To don't be they? F- they do. It's a bit weak. I think it the is. air to the Ponsbury throne can can probably run to a fire station. I'll see what else there is, but that's what mm. about that little little? Oh, he's got that one. That's not Duplo. I'm we are not, still I'm reco- not we, are, we are still recording. That. No, that's too. No, it that's wasn't fine. that one. No, that is not. That is ridiculous money. It wasn't that much. This is last year, right? Where it's just his. Next year, he's going to have to share this budget. You never thought that, did you? Yeah, but that's way too much. Don't worry about it. Okay. Up you, next, you... White Shadows. I decide what's enough for the, for the new air. It's not that it's my son, but you know. Oh, my oh you need to watch the last year. It's right up your street. What? White Shadows, PC, PS5, and the Xbox Series of Consoles, December 7th. I forgot where we were, to be honest. I did go a little bit off piece there. The Wolves watching Venture Through a Captivating but Brutal Dystopia, where our young adventurer, Raven Girl, will travel through this huge city's brightest highs and delve to its darkest depths on her perilous journey of discovery and finding her destiny, where hope seems in short supply. Here's my mummy, mummy. Is it yours? I would if I could play this. It's very, it looks very good. Very impressed with this. I think that this. I've been at war with James' work experience, boy. For space on the Series S hard drive. So we can have this and all his other ramble. He wants this. 
he doesn't really know, despite my best efforts. He downloaded the Master Chief collection and didn't think it was that great. I don't think he even got Pillar of Autumn. I told him about the free multiplayer beta. Not interested. I said what? to him, dude, you know you like Forza Horizon 5? You've really been enjoying it. He's like, yeah, we've had a great time with that game. Yeah. I was like, Halo Infinite is like that other big hit. You need to, if you play on this Xbox, you need to have at least played Halo 1 or 2 or 3 or at least played some of the gears. Not interested. It's mad to think like there's a lot of people his age playing console and they're not really aware of what made those consoles and that company big. Absolutely. They're just playing third-party games that they could play on any of the consoles. Mm. Mad. Free-to-play games for the most part. Yeah. That's so popular. Although saying that, with that games are work experience, but I've, played, I've tried Sea of Thieves. It's, although technically on paper it should be for me, it's not for me. But he has spent hours on it. And With, he I think loves it's, it. I think we'll just like this is probably something we should have just done in the Infinite feature. Moment. Let's get Halo Infinite. Let's give it the props. Halo Infinite PC Series X and Xbox One. Absolute miracle that they're putting it on there. December eighth, the legendary Halo series returns to the most expansive Master Chief campaign yet, and a groundbreaking free to play multiplayer experience. Did I say that? Probably did. Question: Xbox have committed to dual platform rollout they're going to support yeah. the xbox one for quite some time yet yeah, everyone's getting angsty at playstation for doing it i am yeah, as well i think, I I think know playstation why, I playstation had promised not and then they did and xbox mm, never promised did they so commit to generations yeah they, thing, they should it? have just to be fair that was, when he, they said that i was like yeah good reason to upgrade confirmed well yeah. done oh no now i feel <laughs> now i feel like i've got a 32 extra connect under my tv yeah and I think that's the dodgy ground that you that you that you're on if you say mm. something. But they probably thought we forgot because we've got the attention span of moles. I mean, we did just go off on a Lego buying mission via watching the trailer for what was it called? Walk the Line, Thunder Tier, Thunder Tier One, Thunder Tier One. Are you from Tijuana? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's next? Uh, startup Panic on the PC, December eighth. Quit your job and build an exciting startup. Survive the tech bu- bubble. Compete with rival CEOs and expand your office from bedroom program up to the heights of global corporate sabotage, as long as you don't get hacked or kidnapped. Okay. Breakwaters on the PC, December 9th. Adventure through an ever-changing oceanic world that evolves the way you interact with water. Swim, sail, and fly to new islands with unique resources to build craft and survive. Join friends online and build a home to defend or defeat massive titans, bringing calm to the waves. I put this on. I feel like I regret it now because... Although the premise was interesting, it was it was done through the medium of very early PS2 sim graphics. And I regret putting it in the Mummy Mummy boot. Okay. It's not a Mummy Mummy boot. It was, it's in the boot. In fact, we've had worse than the boot. I'll move on. We, we What's the last one? Yeah. Uh, KEO PC, December 9th. KEO is a team-based online multiplayer vehicle combat game set in a sci-fi post-apocalyptic world. Build your load out, load out to suit your playstyle and balance your team to dominate the battlefield using futuristic remote-controlled vehicles. Tell me, friend, what VHS are you picking this week? Ooh. Tuffy. Not watched much this week. A VHS. A film that you saw as a child that stayed with you It resonated. I've been through them all. Three Musketeers. Keeper Silver. I think you should pick that. No, I'd go for the the Man in the Iron Mask, which is kind of a sequel. That's what you want, yeah. Okay, do you know what I'm picking? Carry on up the Kyber. <laughs> oh, you didn't see that coming, did you? I'm gonna I'm gonna actually get another video as well. Please, oh. please, sir. Okay. Now, a, a lovable film about a. a a rough London school goes on holiday to the countryside, starring a young Peter Sellers. It's great. Okay, I shall look it up. I'll show you the trailer. Current. He's minutes. gone. Spring settles, what? smoke wet a wall. Peter Sellers or Ray? Both. Both. He's one's got left the earth, the other one's left our immediate vicinity. Yeah. I'll let you choose which. Okay. 
those who paid attention at the top of the show, and crikey me, they've been on a roller coaster via Amazon and the Thunder Tijuana advert. They're all hankering to know what you're hoping to play. I'm going to download, uh, well, I'm going to finish Kenner. Uh, I'm going to download Mortal Shell. Uh, which is one of the PS Plus Ooh. games. It's a Souls-like game. I know. <laughs> and it, one of the better ones uh, from reviews that I've read said it's a more higher end. There's a lot of Souls-like games and some of them aren't very good and this one is meant, actually meant to be fairly decent. Quite like the idea of the Mortal Shell is like um, you're allowed to use it once every so often in combat and it basically like just blocks any damage you've got coming in, which is quite a cool idea. It seemed like his body just hardens up and stuff. Like in Batman, where he's like cocoon, <laughs> shield. I was thinking of some another film where he's like got like almost like tectonic plate like skin. What that is? Wait till you play Guardians and you'll be able to tell me it's that guy. Oh, am I thinking of the other guy from Thor? Korg is it the one who looks like he's made out of rock? No, no well, ones. also in Thor, there's the big metal guy The in the first Thor film. There's that thing that comes down to planet Earth with the orange eyes that burns everything. Ah, right. He always looks like a good metal artist. Have you, have you seen all the Marvel films? Every single one. Apart from Eternals and the latest Shanghai Drinks of Truth, whatever it's yeah. called. I haven't seen that. That's meant to be quite good, actually. Yeah, I've heard it's brilliant. Um, that's on the Disney Plus. Right. Like, Thanks. Boy's a big fan of that 15 Kung Fu film, you know, love. <laughs> Massive fan. Wants all the merch for Christmas, know what I'm saying? Goo Goo Gaga. <laughs> He's a big, this Todd Lard, Todd Lard. This Todd Lard is a massive fan. Big fan. He wants the medieval choke basket for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if I got him that, you'd have performed more Heimlich's on him before dinner than I've had hot dinners. <laughs> True. He's choking on the baguette. <laughs> choking on the anvil <laughs> what's he choking on now oh god the brick built seagull yeah he's just got jude play for christmas excellent oh and i was gonna get him like an old um what do you reckon out of this selection the crocodile where you press the teeth and it eventually snaps no buckaroo uh pop-up pirate pop-up pirate for a toddler for a toddler yeah or what was the other one? I love that Tolala is the thing. They, they sound like um, a fantasy small person out of a, a, a sci-fi fantasy series or something. Perfect. Toledars. A Toledar. Do you like think... A, they're our version. Wait. Know, Tolkien had hobbits. We've got Toledars. We've got Toledars. Live down the bottom end of the yeah. village. Yep. Is that really far away? No, they're actually that small. Yes. I better ask you what you're hoping to play this week. I am starting to put right the wrongs. I've picked up, I've already got quite an extensive library, but I've also now picked up an Xbox 360. So I can begin to rebuild the 2006 launch library. I'm thinking I need King Kong, Condemned. (laughs) What are you like? They got an achievement on in again. (laughs) Did they have achievements? They did, didn't they? Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, Perfect Dark... What did I say to start with? King Kong, Perfect Dark Zero, Cameo Elements of Power, Project Gotham Racing, Call of Duty 2, Amped 3. Apart from Condemned. The, I've done Condemned Criminal Origins yet. Yeah. Apart from those... Okay, I'm not including sports games. Are, are we going to... Are you going to go full visit to Asda, Fight Night Round 3? No, that one launched. And Ghost Recon. That was six months after... I'm also going to try and get hold of a copy of Oblivion, the special edition with the Nero Septim coin. I had that and I traded it. I had the biggest that. regret of my life because I thought it was I great. think I traded it as well. I traded but kept the coin. Because <laughs> the, the price was the same with or without the coin. <laughs> so I thought I'll keep the coin, but now I don't know where I put it's the like coin. It's like a cardboard box edition, wasn't it? But quite chunky. Yeah, like a book. it looked nice. Yeah. And I always thought that initial branding. Again, I like we talked it. About I think, this. I think it looked three, fresh. Six, 360 looked good. Yeah. yeah. Nice console. With its sucked in waist and its sexy little green, light green, because original Xbox was that dark green, but then 360 came with that neon green, look fresh. Yeah. And then against the white of the sucked in waist of the 360, everything just felt, I even felt slim with the 360. I think I, I, I really like the revised one, The did they call it the slim, the black one? That's or the one the, I've uh, 360 Elite. 
No, the, there was the Elite, which came out around... It was more... The first uh, year. Sh- and then there was a Slim. Square Alliance. The yeah, and I then had. they did, they reformed it again to have the, the, the family style heritage of the new incoming Xbox One. Right. So I've got the in-between one. Yeah. I think I probably the one that's probably that ready the Xbox one that probably one. got bundled when Kinect launched, so it already had the Kinect. Because I think the original Xbox you had to double up on some USBs, yes. and it was a bit yeah, messy yeah. and annoying yeah. if you had the plug-in aerial. If you had the Xbox 360 like me and wasn't anywhere near the Ethernet cable, you had to buy a little dick on a stick to stick in the back of your of your that's console. What that's what I had. A little aerial. Yeah, I like that. Hello. Is it PG Takes to say back. dick on a stick? That's fine. It takes me back to me Battle for Middle Earth days. That so I'm going to be cleaning and rebuilding a 360. Okay. You don't need rebuilding. I'm going to clean it, and I'm going to go. I'm going to. I'm going to. Hopefully, if I've got the time, I'll play through the library of games because I've got Fable Two. I've got Fable One on original Xbox. I think How do you think they're going to hold up after playing 60 frames per second? Kenna? I don't. I. I I switched Kenner back to 30, and I was like, "Oh wow, that's horrible." I had something to confess to you. I was playing. I'd been playing, um, oh, what game was it? It was a, it was Uncharted 4. Yeah. On a base launch PlayStation 4, which must be at 30. And I must have been playing loads of stuff at 60 and just been like, oh, oh, oh not even realising. On the PS5. On the PS5. Yeah. And then I started playing some games on the base <laughs> PS4 and I was like, What's this? why is it not running? What's run? Oh, he is running. The animation of him is sprinting, yet the screen is agonizingly slow. And then yeah. it started to dawn on me. I was like, "What's wrong with the game? Is it something wrong with set?" The same as going back to like N sixty four PS two oh, era. This feels. It thing is, it's never ever bothered me before because I think the industry has been targeting thirty for so long. Our eyes have got used to it, but yeah. now we've had a few sixty f experiences. Because for the most part, the industry was trying to nail 30 FPS for quite some time. Yes, yeah. we've had 50 and 60 hertz and games have been up there. But for the most part, once things get running at home on a console, we're in that ballpark. Unless it's a fighting game or some other yeah. nonsense. And that's what we've been used to, especially for open world adventure games and all, all that other ramel. So then when you've played these 60 FPS slick experiences, I didn't think I would struggle. But man... It's it's, it's, um, it's it's very jarring in Ratchet and Clank when you go from 60 to 30 when you can switch it about. Mm. Spider-Man, I didn't notice it quite as much because that's always flown quite well and quite smooth. Experience. It was smooth. I think the 60 um, FPS experience now would make it tough. Yeah. Because it felt so... Miles felt so fresh, so reactive. And everything just like the electric in that was just fantastic. If that had yeah. been 30... And then we got a patch to 60. I was like, oh, God, man, the car crash. Yeah. Is that us done? I think so. We must thank everyone for listening. We must thank everyone for the support. We're on the run up to Christmas. Who knows whether we can pull a Christmas special out of our backsides, but we've never let you down so far. This will be the th- most, this will be the difficult third album. Okay. Rather than going to overreach ourselves, it's going to be an overblown mess. Are you still in be? talks with um, the the White Duke? The yeah, Duke. yeah, and the mighty sir, I am, and I'm working with. We you need those components in place. Tying the latter down, it, it'll happen. Don't worry. Without him, okay, we can do it without. Listen, he was only ever a supporting role to you. This will be made clear to him in the contract negotiations. If you do a line, will I sub play? Average, he will have to do a line that's crap. If he's not available, does that mean I'm playing the main character? I thought I was the main character this year. I'm the... the Am I the boy or the man? I was the boy. Okay. That would make you the man. man. Okay. That would make... I didn't see it as like, he would be good. But anyway, so we've we've got two off-screen pre-records. Agreed. One I need to script, one's already been scripted. And, and you know what? They've nailed it. They, they've nailed it. They know who it is. And they're like, hmm, those have done well. You, once you send me the recording, if it's halfway as good as that script, you've nailed it. Excitement. Last okay. year was amazing. To top that, 
the year, like the first year, was amazing, especially with all the time. Don't, on don't the hype media. it up because then I just get like, vroom, 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 we need to hype it. Come on, my god, kid, okay. my god, is that the Christmas special? He's wearing a listener's stingray medallion. What does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> See, the best bit is there'll be a conspiracy theory. Listener stingrays coming back. I don't want to disappoint people. <laughs> It's gone, mate. No. All these little, what are they called? Easter eggs? Easter eggs. People love it. My it, God, it, we, Tom's lifted up you. his sleeve. We it's to... the Grand Theft Auto photo reveal. My God, it says listeners. Hashtag listeners stingray. He's got to be it coming It would be back. wiser if we'd have done Easter eggs for the actual Christmas special that we've planned. We did. Did we? Yeah, subtly <laughs> waving into the script. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Only a moron. So, so Only like, a moron wouldn't be able to pick him up. I give to you the Emperor's clothes of a script. If I don't have a million references in the Discord to the Easter eggs, then I'm wearing no clothes. Well, hats off Shame to anyone who can guess what it's going to be. Thunder Tijuana! <laughs> My God, that game! Okay. <laughs> I'm done if you're done. I feel, I, I feel I we've done. had... Yes. I feel, I feel we've had a show. Yeah, sometimes it's just nice to chew the fat, isn't it, and not keep it too yeah. streamlined. My God, he's just got suplex through that table. What was on that table, kid? My God, hashtag listeners stay right. That's all we have time for this week, listeners. Always thank you for your time. We'll look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you listen to Stingray with it that counts. Tom, see you next week. See you next week.